Are, are you still alive? <laughs> are you still streaming? Um, so I, I updated OBS uh, earlier and to re log in to Twitch. So, uh, to OBS or whatever. Um, but, uh, it seems to be goes. I mean, we haven't even been live for a minute. Um, <laughs> so maybe it'll be a bit better, but, uh, CPU usage seems to be lower than it was, uh, yesterday or even Sunday from what I remember. It's bouncing between 0.4% and 0.7. Uh, yesterday, last night, it was like... 1.3 to lower than that, maybe a little higher than that. Um, but, uh, yeah, cool. <laughs> I also don't have, um, um, noise suppression on either, so that might be doing something. Um, but, uh, so, I have to get up early tomorrow. I'm going shopping with my grandma. <laughs> so, I don't know if we'll go two hours. If, uh, and, uh, <laughs> I was up, uh, all night. I was up to, like, four in the morning. <laughs> I was binging, um, Undead Farce, oh, what, what is it called, <laughs> what is it called, Undead Farce Replay, I don't remember, okay, <laughs> uh, it's the one where the, the lady's head is in a birdcage, and they're detectives, yeah, Undead Murder Farce, yeah, okay. I binged the whole thing in one night. I, uh... It was... It's too good. <laughs> I was not planning on watching the whole thing, but it was... It was pretty gripping. At, uh... Yeah. I hope it gets a second season, because it's pretty good. Um, I don't know if it will, but we'll see. We'll see. Hi, Toto. Hi, dear. How are you? Good to see you. So yeah, I was up to like 4 in the morning. Maybe later, I don't know. I don't know what time I actually fell asleep. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, today I went to the... Can I get earbuds so you change... And get your dinner ready. Okay, okay. I'm good. I'm good. Just sleepy. <laughs> I was up uh, very late. Um. Watching an anime. I finished the. Whole, I binged the whole thing. All thirteen episodes. Um. So I didn't get to sleep. I didn't get to bed till pretty late. And uh Um Yeah, so I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. I was I was I felt fine this morning and then uh the afternoon into the evening. Um but I went to yeah, I went to the usual market to get a pop up cooking kit um, to do on our next 12 hour stream for 400 because um, on Amazon there's a pa 3 pack for like $20 but at the Asian mar market I got it for $3.99 so um, much better deal <laughs> I think Uh, 
but I also got, I guess some snacks because I wanted to treat myself, right? So I got some, some cheesecake, uh, made in Japan cheesecake. That's what it says on the label. Um, and, uh, I got a can of taro boba. It was artificially flavored. I didn't realize that till after I got home and I sat down to open it. <laughs> um, and I got, um, the puppet cooking kit and, uh, the cheesecake. The cheesecake, <clears throat> um, I don't know if it's because it was, it wasn't frozen. I didn't buy the frozen one. I got the one that had been sitting in, like, the, the cool area where they keep the drinks and stuff, right? Where it had been thawing. So I don't know if that made the texture weird. But it, it was basically, like, a, uh, angel food cake kind of texture. Um, it, uh, it was good, though. It had a very light flavor. It would have been much better with some whipped cream and, like, fruit. Some fruit. Or it doesn't matter what fruit. I just needed something. I kind of wish I got the caramel flavor, but it, judging by how this one was flavored, it probably would have made a difference. <laughs> it it did smell kind of weird, because I opened it and I smelled it. The cheesecake. And it smelled like vaguely of Cheetos. And it, it was just kind of weird. I don't know what Cheetos. Yeah, it was a can, it was a boba in a can, 16 ounce can, it was about as tall as my microphone, maybe not that tall, but it was, it was pretty tall for a can, um, that I usually drink out of, <laughs> um, but the way that the can opened, there was enough space for the boba to come out while you were drinking it. So, um, I used the back of a fork to push it open more. <laughs> and, uh, but I didn't actually get, like, boba. Uh, I didn't get the tapioca balls in my mouth till uh, like, it was, the can was almost empty. Because <laughs> you had to turn it, like, pretty much upside down to get the boba in there. It was good, though. I like, I like taro comes down, yeah, they were really small, kind of mushy, probably because they had been sitting in the can for who knows how long, <laughs> um, and then I, I got, I got some, they had a bunch of Lay's chips, like bag, little bags, um, but there's still a fair amount of chips and they weren't really broken, small is fine sometimes, yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> That's true. I'm one to talk, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, the, the chips, they had a bunch of them. They were selling the bag for like, uh, white plushie. <laughs> white plushie. Um, but, uh, so, they were selling, they had a sale or something on the, they had a bunch of them. They had like a lot of these Lay's flavored chips. These flavored Lay's chips. There was peach beer, uh, pork belly, or just grilled pork, um, crab, Itali red Italian meat, or red Italian red meat f flavor. I don't know what that is. Uh, croft spicy crayfish. Um, there was, there were bags, there was like two in one, 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 some of the chips were chicken flavored and some were sriracha flavored, I think. That's what, I think that was what was implied by the packaging. Um, I got a bag that was ribeye steak flavored. The bag was like matte, it had like a matte finish with gold accents on the, on the wrap, on the bag. Like it was really nice. It was like three something, I think, just for... Like, uh, a little handful of chips. It wasn't, like, it, I think, I don't know. It was probably the same amount of chips that you'd find in, like, the little chip bags by, like, the self-checkout at Walmart. If not, maybe a little less. Um, but they weren't really, 
none of them were really broken because um, the chips in the in the bag were like nice and thick compared to like Lay's chips you get at Walmart. <laughs> um, it was awesome. I liked the texture of what they were po potatoy. The smell was a little weird. <laughs> they smelled a little weird, uh, but they tasted fine. I think I would have preferred it was if it was just barbecue flavored. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it was not. It wasn't too bad. If you can find them, give them a try. If you like beef flavored things, <laughs> uh, yeah, they were good. Uh, the so that was my lunch. <laughs> I had some peanut butter sandwiches for breakfast, and then I had those the snacks for lunch and then I had some marchan yakisoba for dinner the sponge cakes they have there sometimes yeah I think that's what the cheesecake was it was like a sponge cake it, it really needed like some whipped cream maybe and so, like some fruit some cherries or blueberries or something like fruit syrup or just some fruit um, it reminded me of those like little cake cup things you can buy that like, you put whipped cream and fruit in and stuff um, but uh, it was good uh, I don't need any more of it though because that one is like an exotic twink oh okay the cheesecake was not like a twinkie at all it was not it wasn't really greasy either like a twinkie is because <coughs> twinkies are kind of greasy kind of they're sticky right the cheesecake was not sticky at all um but uh, i'm glad i got it i'm glad i tried it i don't need to try it again uh, i think i'm good <laughs> i'm good on the cheesecake <laughs> Teto, what are you doing about the Twinkies, right? The, the, the snack the ca snack cake. I don't know what you're thinking about. Ugh. Um, but yeah, and then I had some, we have a few things of March and Yakisoba. It was alright. I, I didn't, I don't think I put enough water in it because the center of the block of noodles is still kind of crunchy. I mean, it wasn't totally, like, hard. It was just kind of, you know, like, you leave the noodles out, and then they dry up a little bit after, like, an hour. It was, like, that texture uh, for the ones in the center. The rest of them are fine. Um, yeah. You too, of course. Right, 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 right. But how are you, Teto? Are you doing all right? Did you, did you answer that question? I'm sorry if you did. <laughs> I'm sorry if you did. I'll, I'll be, I'll be all right. Give me one second. Sorry about that. Waiting for your food to arrive? What, what, what food? <laughs> what food? What food did that? Yoshi no idea. I don't know what that is. <laughs> One more second.
Oh, okay, okay. I see, I see. Sounds good. So yeah, we, we we can't really we can't really go over time today. <laughs> We're gonna try not to, cause I gotta get up early tomorrow. Um, my grandma wants to take me to the fabric store at like 8 in the morning. Because <laughs> I, I guess we've got a good deal of this weekend. Um, so she wants to get, to, she wants us to get there before, you know. As if the owner shows up. Tato, I don't know if you can hear me, but I have one last, I have one last Tootsie Roll. I have one last Tootsie Yep, there it is. <laughs> it's the last one. It is. What the? There we go. Can we get it open? Yeah, what time? Yeah. The last one? Yeah, this is the last one. This is the last one. Listen to them. If 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 you find, if you really want to, if you find a bag of dum dums that doesn't cost seventy two dollars, <laughs> I'll put it on the wish list. All right, but I don't need a for any. I don't need a bag of dum dums that costs seventy two dollars. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's too many dum dums. It's only it's a pack of four hundred. Right? I feel I feel like you can get that at Walmart and it doesn't cost seventy two dollars. Alright, so this one it's uh it's all there. Uh, the whole Tootsie Roll is there. The Tootsie Pop. It's not a perfect circle, but uh, it's all there. There's no cracks. No chunks of it missing or chunks that came off and then resealed stuck to the sucker to getting warmed up. Might be the nicest one. The chocolate was pretty nice too. The chocolate, the shape of the chocolate one was pretty nice. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of it's lopsided. It's kind of leaning. The candy, you know, it's kind of leaning <laughs> to one side. Um. Okay. Oh, and it's cherry. I saved the cherry for the last one. This is the best Tootsie Pop flavor. <laughs> it is the best flavor. It is.
tastes like maraschino cherry syrup. Um, it's good. I was feeling really sleepy uh, when I got home after I finished the tea and the, the chips and stuff. I feel more awake now, but maybe it's the caffeine from the tea. I don't know. I don't know if there was even caffeine in the tea. It didn't. The can didn't really specify how much was in the can. But uh, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> This is the last one, Teto. You, you better enjoy this. You can see that uh, the, the V2 Rasa going around with the, <coughs> with the the coat, with the scarf and the gloves, gripping the gripping the camera. Um, I I kind of want to try, but I don't know. If <laughs> it would work with my model. I don't know. Sorry about that. I do cough.
No, it's a weird shape. I have a fun gift suggestion, let me go look at that, let's see. <laughs> let's see, roll pops, okay. <coughs> Alright, I'm approving it there though. If I've ever seen a bag with just Tootsie Roll Pops. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Let's see, one, two, three, four right there at the bottom of the bag. Hmm. Okay. Sure. Thank you for the suggestion, Toto. Thank you, thank you. to the stage where there's some we've hit some air bubbles or something right so it's kind of sharp
One second. Sorry about that. We've hit Tootsie Roll. We've hit Tootsie Roll. is crunch time. <coughs> okay, it's crunch time. That's it. That's it. The last tootsie pop. I'm curious what you even like about that in the first place. It's not small enough to swallow like a pill. Okay, it's gone. <laughs> That's always the worst part of a tissue roll anything to see related.
was that, Teto? <laughs> How was that? Tail. Hi dear. No, your smooch is okay. Hi nine tail. feeling a little better dear That's good. Mm-hmm. 
<coughs> Do you have your, your headphones, Nine Tail? It starts with all no.
뭐가 있나 인테요 If you're tired, don't, don't, don't stream. don't have to do with everything. I do with everything because I got nothing better to do. <laughs> and I, I enjoy doing it. Yes, do, don't burn yourself out. Don't do that. Understandable here. Months for an intel. Sorry about that.
that's the closest thing I've got to purring. Excuse me, sorry about that. Throw me a weird noise. Hi, baby Dima. Hi, dear. Hello, sweet pie. How are you? Good to see you. How are you? Stretch. Okay. Thank you. Is some water? I can do that. I can do water. You're doing okay, but if you... Glad to hear you're doing okay. It's Wednesday. <laughs> it's, it's hump day. Do people still say that? Do people still say it's hump day? When, when did that ad come out? When when was when did that camel become a thing? When, when was when was this ever a thing? Squats. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Thank you for this quest, Thorn. Thank you, thank you.
Kato. Congrats on the 15 stream streak. Congrats. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. God Papu, God ninety nine, Papu. Oh, I said that right. Hello, how are you, dear? Good to see you. Oh, Teto, <laughs> Teto, did it, did it pop up on on stream? I did. I didn't see it. I can I can't hear it because my headphones are plugged into my mic, but. Did you did you give me the tootsie bowl, the tootsie pops? <laughs> Tato, <laughs> thank you, Tato. Thank you for the follow, God Papu. Thank you, thank you. Follow dear, thank you, thank you. If you have a favorite trigger, let me know, and I'll I'll uh, do my best to do it for you. I can't really do ear eating though, because <laughs> I don't have the mic for it.
I wonder how long it'll take for these Tootsie Pops to uh, show up. Tato and a stretch, okay. Redeems Tato, thank you, thank you.
close up. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if I learned anything recently. Let's see. Let's see. Oh yeah, did you guys hear about Tyson recalling <laughs> their dinosaur nuggets because it might have uh, metal pieces in them? Yeah. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Suggestion. What do we have here? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, the nuggets. Okay. Sorry, I was looking at... It's a skirt. And then I looked down and he said, I'd still eat. <laughs> it's like, what? Hold on. Huh? What? Huh? What do you mean you'd still eat? Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, my, my sister pretty much... Uh, will only eat... Chicken... And st stuff drenched in uh, Hidden Valley Ranch's spicy ranch. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you could not find Tyson Nuggets. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is, but it was suggested by Anonymous. So it could not, it could, where is that there? Yeah, yeah, could be, could be, could be. Um, okay. That's a cute hoodie, actually, that one's cute. You've, you've got some, some good taste here, Tata. Some of these are a bit, uh... <laughs> some of these are a bit, uh, um... A bit out there. Well, not out there, but, uh, spicy, I suppose. They're kind of spicy. Sure, 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 sure. Um, let's, let's see. Should we talk about, let's, should we talk about Concavenator? Let's see. 
if you're talking about concave in the air. Alright, here we go. I'll, I'll read a bit of this Wikipedia article. little paragraph on, uh, about its integument and then uh, that's it another very long article do we only have the types okay maybe we only I don't know I don't know I have the, the book right <coughs> that I could read um but um you know, maybe I can try whispering out to hide it. I think it's not because I can't get while reading the book. Maybe. Maybe. Should we go? Uh, let's, let's try. Let's try. Let's try. Okay, Lost my place. Did we finish the Triassic? Did we finish the Triassic? I, th I feel like we might have. We just turned to a random page. Oh, here we go. This is info on feet. Some dinosaur feet. Okay, um, okay, 
Tyrannosaurus right foot. The famous predator sprinted on three bird-like toes, each bearing a savage hooked claw, while keeping its heel and a smaller fourth digit raised from the ground. This arrangement gave Tyrannosaurus extra spring, enabling it to accelerate easily to pers in pursuit of its prey. Uh, Pedosaurus right foot. Super superficially, the big sauropod's feet may have looked similar to those of elephants, but close, but a close look at Apatosaurus's bones show how shows how different they were. Like most sauropods, it had a single large claw on the front feet, and three on its hind feet. After felling, felling a would-be predator with a lash of its tail, the twenty-seven ton, thirty ton herbivore could deliver a fatal blow by smashing its feet down on the prone theropod. Its feet were also more elongated, measuring around 90 centimeters by 60 centimeters, 3 feet by 2 feet, that's a pretty big foot, <laughs> and, the course, and of course far bigger. Adult elephants have rounded feet rarely more than f uh, 16 inches across. That is a big foot. <laughs> that is a big foot. A big foot. Alright. Uh, Guana Iguanodon left manis. Okay. Unlike its 19th century discoverer, Gideon Man Mantell, we know what Iguanodon spike we, we know that Iguanodon spike was part of its hand rather than its nose, but this its precise purpose remains uncertain. Its possible uses include close range defense against theropods, ripping into fruit and seed pods, or battling with rifles. And this is uh, Dinosaurs the Grand Tour. Everything worth knowing about dinosaurs from Ardonix to Zunoceratops. This is the second edition from. Uh, what year was this? What year was this? I don't remember. <laughs> it's been a few years though, for sure. Okay. I think we got to the Jurassic. Did we get to the Jurassic? We might have. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, let me open chat here. Oh, no, now I can see. <laughs> Alright. Um, oh, here's our Donix. Okay. Alright, this is page 52. Ardonix celeste, meaning earth claw. It's from the early Jurassic in the Hettingian and Cinemarian uh, epochs. I think those are epochs. <laughs> from uh, in hunt between, it lived between 199 to 196 million years ago. It was uh, herbivorous. I weighed 500 kilograms or 1,100 pounds. Holy smoke. Okay, I'm curious. And it's 20, It's 23 feet long. Okay. How much does a, an adult cow weigh? How much does a good cow weigh? <laughs> or maybe a bull. Okay, so uh, an adult bull may weigh between 500 and 1,000 kilograms, uh, 1,100 and 2,200 pounds. Okay, so it weighed about as much as a bull, but it was like twice as long. <laughs> okay. Cool, and it was found in South Africa. Um, let's see. Worldwide interest greeted the announcement in 2009 of this bulky herbivore, herbivore, <laughs> herbivore's discovery in South Africa, as it sits within an evolutionary gap that paleontologists have been hoping to fill for years. We know the prosauropods of the late Triassic and early Jurassic, and the huge sauropods into which they eventually evolved in the late Jurassic. <coughs> 
Our darlings fits neatly between the two in terms of its anatomy, posture, and feeding habits. It had the sauropodomorph's elongated neck, leading to a small head, the massive torso and long tail, but it has primarily it was primarily bipedal. However, our darlings could drop down onto all fours and had the shape of its forearm bone and the shape of its forearm bones shows that they were in the process of evolving into front legs that were beginning to interlock, making them stronger and less flexible. Flexibility is not a good trait in limbs bearing a heavy load, as it would lead to the joints buckling and perhaps breaking. <coughs> so here is the beginning of the skeletal structure that would allow a sauropod such as Arge Argentinosaurus to support its body weight of up to perhaps 81 tons or 89.3 tons, with one N and no E. <laughs> Our Donix also lacked the prosauropod's fleshy cheeks, <laughs> which allowed it to open its mouth wider. Uh, this shows a transition between the prosauropod's way of picking at leaves and the sauropod's more industrial approach of bulk browsing. Uh, in which they stripped branches of foliage wholesale. Odonix's name combines Afrikaans and Greek and means earth claw, referring to uh, the encrust encrustation and hematite, a hard, hard iron, iron ore around the fossil's toes, which made extracting the bones a very difficult task. Hi, Nightail. Okay, and on page 53, we'll just read this page and then um, move on. Uh, this is Unanosaurus. Unanosaurus huangi, um, also from the early Jurassic, uh, the same epochs as Ardonix, and also uh, Pleisbachian. The Pleisbachian, I think, I hope that's how you say it, Epoch, uh, lived between uh, 200 and 185 million years ago. Uh, it was an herbivorous high browser, 700 kilograms or 1,500 pounds, uh, from, and was discovered in the Yunnan province, southern China. It was also 23 feet long, but weighed a bit more than the Ardonix. One of the latest prosauropods, Unanosaurus, <laughs> was especially notable for its teeth. Of the 20 or so skeletons found, two have skulls, and one of those has a set of 60 spoon-shaped teeth very like those of the, the later sauropods. The wear patterns show that, uniquely among prosauropods, Unanosaurus kept its teeth sharp by grinding them together when chewing foliage. However, the differences between the rest of its skeleton and the giant sauropod suggest that rather than being their direct ancestor, it evolved similar teeth to suit its environment, and then they did so all over again tens of millions of years later. This is another example of convergent evolution. Like the phytosaur Leptosuchus, page 40, the pioneering Chinese paleontologist Ying Zongnian, also known as C.C. C. Young, named Uanosaurus in 1942, when Lu Yuncheng described a second species in 2007. Twice as large and dating from the Middle Jurassic, he named it in Young's honor. Okay. Do we read one more? That one was kind of short. <laughs> okay. This is Isusaurus. Isus Isusaurus Sune uh, from the early Jurassic and the Hetankian Epoch lived between 199 and 196 million years ago also herbivorous uh, the weight is uncertain uh, f found in the same place as the last one Yunnan province southern China um, it, it's 30 feet three, 33 feet long as long as a double-decker bus, it says here. <laughs> the so-called missing link. Oh, this is page 54. The so-called missing link sparked great excitement when revealed in 2010. 
and it was officially described in a scientific paper in 2018. Understanding of the Orisaurpod's evolution into their immense descendants improved significantly when this exquisitely preserved specimen emerged from the Yunnan province of southern China. Although Yizusaurus was far smaller at uh, 33 feet long, or 10 meters, and had the big sauropod's quadruped stance, robust body, and long neck, and most importantly, the remains included a complete and perfect skull. That's cool. Sauropod skull skulls are light and fragile, meaning they rarely fossilized, but here every detail was set in stone. Uh, literally. <laughs> it has a high domed head with eyes on the sides, granting good awareness of approaching enemies. Its wide, U-shaped jaw was similar to the later Kamarasaurus. According to Texas Tech University's Professor Sankar Chatterjee, the paleontologist who announced the find, both jaws held sturdy, serrated, and spoon-shaped teeth that sliced up and down like scissors, cutting up veg vegetation as it fed. Fifty years before Yuzusaurus, his discovery, the same, uh, the same rock beds, known as the Lower Lufang Formation, yielded remains of prosauropods such as Lufangosaurus, Lufangosaurus, thanks to Isosaurus's, Isosaurus, we know, <laughs> we now have a better idea of how those primitive creatures evolved into the biggest animals to ever walk the earth. Okay, I'm having fun with this. I'm having fun with this. <laughs> Let me just keep going. Should we just, um, should, let's read this one. It's not very long. <laughs> uh, page 55. I'm just, ha I'm having fun. I'm having, I'm having fun, okay. <laughs> uh, this is, Scutellosaurus. Scutellosaurus, excuse me. <laughs> Scutellosaurus lauri. Lauri is 4 foot 3 inches long, or 1.3 meters. It's a, here. Uh, most of these have, are just silhouettes. They're not actually like detailed illustrations, which is kind of sad, but also this book is massive and it would be very expensive to. <laughs> probably commission a piece of art for every single animal in this book. A few of them have, um, like, actual, like, hand-drawn illustrations, like a Velociraptor does, I believe. Velociraptor's uh, art in this book, I think it's in this book, is so pretty. It is such a pretty piece of art. <laughs> it is so very pretty. Okay, anyway. This is Scutellosaurus, um, from the early Jurassic in the Cinnamurian, and it lived 196 million years ago. It was also herbivorous, uh, weighed 7 pounds or 3 kilograms, and was found in Arizona, USA. The diminutive plant-eating Scutellosaurus was a predecessor to the great armored beasts that would evolve later, such as Stegosaurus and Ankylosaurus. It had two ploys to defend itself from formidable predators such as the highly successful hunter Coelophysis. Escape by running as fast as it could, or hunker down and let its enemies try to penetrate its dense armor plating until they gave up. As a biped with strong legs and a long tail that helped it to balance, it would have been a quick mover compared to its later quadruped relatives. It is known from a small portion of skull and the bulk of two skeletons with loose armor plates, or scoots. It had more than 300 of these small protective shields in six different forms, from bony lumps covered it, covering its back to vertical plates like miniature versions of those later sported by Stegosaurus. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, on the next page, on the next two pages, we have, um, on page 56, we have Dilophosaurus. And the Dilophosaurus has its own uh, illustration here, a whole page dedicated to the illustration. It is really, it's pretty nice. I like it. 
<laughs> There's got feathers coming out of between the crests on the head. We still don't actually know how tall those crests were because they're very fragile. Um, and they did not, uh, yes, <laughs> they did not, it's hard for those to fossilize, um, because they're so thin, um, so we don't know if, how tall they were, um, there's, I think, I don't know if it actually is, but, uh, I think I remember hearing that there's a theory or something that they were connected to the nasal, uh, cavity or whatever and they were used to make calls or something I think I remember hearing that I'm not sure don't don't quote me on that <laughs> um, so yes this is the Lophosaurus weatherly weather illy <laughs> it's 23 feet long wow lots of things were 23 feet long back then <laughs> uh, from the early Jurassic in the Cinemurian uh, epoch lived 195 million years ago. The carnivorous uh, weighed 400 kilograms or 900 pounds and was discovered in Arizona, USA. Two semicircular crests adorned the head of one of the first great carnivorous theropods at 7 meters or 23 feet long. It is dwarfed by the monsters of the late Cretaceous, but within the early Jurassic, Dilophosaurus would have been a domineering killer of large prosauropods and primitive armored dinosaurs. If you recall Dilophosaurus from the first Jurassic Park film, disregard your image of it. The real animal was far bigger and didn't spit poison. No dinosaurs are known to have been venomous. Though some people argue that Synorthor Syn okay. Synorthosaurus, page 172, might have been. Should we go read that one next? Let's go look at that one next. <laughs> Dilophosaurus's remains were discovered in northern Arizona in 1942 by a Navajo man named Jesse Williams. He informed a team of paleontologists and they recovered three skeletons, none of which seemed to possess any skull ornamentation. Uh, like many large theropods found in the early 20th century, the fossils were initially attributed to Megalosaurus. <coughs> um, of course they were. Uh, see page 64. But the discovery of, in 1964, of another specimen bearing a crest along the snout showed that this was a hitherto unknown animal. Re-examination of the beast's best skull from the previous fossil showed a ridge where two such plates had broken away before fossilization. In 1970, a new genus was created, and a name meaning double-crested lizard. In 2019, Dilophosaurus became the official state dinosaur of Connecticut, where fossil trackways of its kind or close relative were discovered. That's cool. So it ranged from Ar at least Arizona to Connecticut. Okay. Its range is probably larger than that, too. Um, so page 172 is the one that is supposed to be... Or theorized it might be venomous. I want to read that one. It's 187. 172. Oh, that's actually where we are. I do have a bookmark. <laughs> I do have a bookmark. Okay. Well, I put the bookmark here because we read. I don't know. Uh, let's see. <laughs> let's see here. Let's see. Uh, this is page 172. Uh, we're in the um, we're in the Cretaceous now. <laughs> we are in the Cretaceous, which I believe is like twice as long as the Triassic and Jurassic put together. <laughs> the Cretaceous was very long. <laughs> okay, this is Sinor Sinorn Ithosaurus. Sinor Sin Sinornithosaurus 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 Meleni It is 3 feet long or 90 centimeters uh, from the early Cretaceous in the Baramian Epoch Epoch I think those are epochs, I think. <laughs> uh, 
uh, lived between 124 to 122 million years ago, uh, was carnivorous, uh, weighed uh, one and a half kilograms or three and a half pounds, and was found in China. Uh, this little di feathered di dromaeosaurid, the first confirmed, is this little feathered dromaeosaurid the first confirmed venomous dinosaur? The experts are divided between those who are convinced, in particular the team led by paleontologist Empu Kwan, who proposed the notion in 2009 in 2009 study. Those who li would like to see more evidence and those who are dismissive. <coughs> Wait, what? <laughs> uh, those who would like to see more evidence and those who are dismissive. The yes camp cite the presence of a supposedly unique groove. Uh, the presence of supposedly unique grooves and a certain long fang-like in certain long fang-like teeth that led to cavities in the jaw that could have been venom sacs, but others have responded to Gong's work by saying that the elongated teeth just look that way because they were crushed and squeezed out of the the, the jaw sockets a little during its fossilization, and that other theropods have grooved teeth as well. Either way. This was a relative of Dionychus and Utah raptor, and like these other dromaeosaurs, it had feathers and the characteristic sickle-shaped claw on each foot. But one fact that sets Sinorth Sinornithosaurus apart is that we have an idea of its feathery coverings of color. Seemingly a combination of reddish browns and black, thanks to re recent research on fossilized pigment cells, see page 206. In 2018, microscope analysis of fossilized skin revealed tiny flakes of dandruff identical to those found on birds today, which strongly suggests that dinosaurs shed their skin in the same way that birds and, conveniently, humans do. Uh, rather than sloughing off their entire skin in one shed, as some modern reptiles do. I don't know if anyone ever, like... I never thought the dinosaurs shed their skin. Like, can you imagine a, a giraffe, a titan, trying to shed its skin, <laughs> rubbing its back, uh, rubbing its side on, like, a tree? Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I don't think <laughs> that makes sense. Hi Thorne, taking a break from streaming. Well, hello, hello. You're taking a break? So you can go back to streaming? Hmm? We'll probably, we'll be, probably be live for like maybe 20, 30 more minutes. Um, and here on page 173 is Neo Salary. Uh, meaning new hunter. This, uh, this animal is from the early Cretaceous, the same epoch as the as uh, the one we just read. <laughs> um, it lived between 127 and 121 million years ago. Uh, but how how are you, Thorn? Uh, give yourself a shout out, Thorn. <laughs> give yourself a shout out, uh, Thorn. It's uh, Thorn's affiliate anniversary today. Go give Thor lots of love. <coughs> okay. Uh, it's also carnivorous. Carnivorous, sorry. Sorry, I was, I'm getting kind of... You're enjoying yourself? Nice. I'm glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. That's good. Thank you, Thor. Uh, go follow Thor. She is very sweet. Just a sweet pint. Even though she threatened to shank me once. <laughs> uh, New Venator weighed between 100... 1,000 or weighed 1,000 kilograms or 1.1 tons. Holy smokes! And it was found on the Isle of Wight in England. It was 7.5 meters or 25 feet long. Uh, one of the most thrilling theropods discovered in Britain, this crested carnivore roamed southern England when the era was covered by marshland and populated by grazing herds of iguanodon. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, oh my goodness. <laughs> Is that boba tea coming back? Oh no. And, uh, Hypsilophodon? Maybe? 
<laughs> the chief threat came in the form of a streamlined predator, whose name simply means new hunter. It would also have preyed on ankylosaurs and perhaps uh, even the sauropods in which it shared a habitat. Most interestingly, research in 2010 showed that Neovenator was part of a worldwide clade of Cacarodontosaurian allosauroids. Sorry. <laughs> that is, this English dinosaur was a relative of such lethal beasts as Australovenator. See page 226. Raptor and the massive Megaraptor. Page 252. Together, these are now known as neo neovenatorids. <laughs> neovenatorids. Neovenator itself lived in the early Cretaceous, but the last known neovenatorid, lar uh, a large Argentinian hunter called Orcoraptor, survived to the end of the Cretaceous. This proves that is that uh, proves. <laughs> This proves that as well as the Tyrannosaurs and the Belosaurs, there are the late that are the late Cretaceous's most familiar predators. There were still some late surviving Elosauroids. In 1978, the first Neovenator bones were seen protruding from the chalk cliffs on the Isle of Wight's southwest coast. It wasn't until 1996 that more were found, and so far, about 70% of a single skeleton have been recovered enough to provide a clear idea of one of Europe's most formidable dinosaurs. Okay. Sorry, got the sniffles. Got the sniffles. Sorry. On uh, page one, oh, let me squid in here. Let me squid in here. Let me squid in here. On page one seventy four is a uh, oh, tight hair in my face. I cannot see. Hypsilophodon. <laughs> Hypsilophodon foxy. Foxy. It was uh, two point three meters or seven feet six inches long, uh, lived in the early Cretaceous and the Baremian and Aptian epochs, lived uh, between 130 and 125 million years ago, was herbivorous low browser, uh, weighed 20 kilograms or 45 pounds, it was also found uh, on the Isle of Wight, England, and possibly in Spain. Um, for two decades after its discovery in 1949, this hugely abundant little herbivore's bones were brought to, were thought to belong to a warnodon. But in 1870, Thomas Huxley published the first full description that established it as a new genus. He chose a species name to credit his friend William Fox, who found several skeletons at Brightstone Bay on the Isle of Wight. Like several of Victorian England's leading dinosaur hunters, Fox was a vicar. But it seems this took second billing to his passion for uncovering the past. Fox's wife once said that it was always bones first and the parish second. Well, Fox himself once wrote to Sir Richard Owen, saying, I cannot leave this place while I have any money left to live on. I take such deep joy in hunting for old dragons. In Hypsilophodon, he discovered one of Britain's most widespread dinosaurs of the early Cretaceous. However, a mistaken interpretation of its toe bones, published in 1882, led to Hypsilophodon's long-standing depiction as a tree-climbing creature, rather like the modern tree kangaroo, until research in the 1970s showed it to be a ground-dweller. Along with Iguanodon, it would have browsed foliage in the southern marshes. Both would have been hunted by Neovenator, Hypsilophodon's only means of defense, was its great speed. Its stiff tail served as a counterbalance while running, making it easier to twist and turn and escape predators. Hi, Brad. I'll give you a smooch in a second. 
A sufficient hypsilophodon fossils have been found together to suggest that they moved in, in herds, and this, along with their size, and the fact that their toothy beaks were suited to eating tender shoots, has led them has led them to being dubbed the deer of the Cretaceous. And uh, that's all I'll read for now. That's all I'll read for now. I can put that book back on my shelf. Behind bread. Hi, dear. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, let me drink some more real quick. Then I'll get you your snooches. Um, I believe our affiliate anniversary is coming up. I think it's in February. I thought we didn't get affiliate till like March or something, but it was uh, back in February. That's what you're doing, bread. Thank you, thank you, dear. Good to see you. Hope you're doing all right. a bit more than you're barking for there, Tato. But thank you for the redeem, dear. Thank you, thank you.
sniffer. <laughs> okay, give me one second. Hi Nighty, uh, you probably got here just in time for Sniffer. Hi Sucrose, no, I told you you got to be two Sniffers, well Sucrose is here. <laughs> Hi Sucrose, dang it, I was about to drink water, thank you, thank you. Thank you Sucrose, hi Sucrose, how are you dear? I hope we're doing alright. So looking forward to getting for tonight. Nice. <laughs> nice. Um, the last time I uh, DM'd for a uh, DM to session was like my birthday um, in like 2020. <laughs> Maybe 2021. I don't think it was 2021. It was probably 2020. Maybe 2019. Um... I don't think I was very good at it, um, uh, but my, my friends are just goofballs, and they, they stole a ship to go sailing, <laughs> and the ship had barrels of rotten oranges, so they were playing they were a snowball fight with the oranges, and uh, they pelted a seagull with one. That was like the last thing they did. They had a, a rotten orange fight. <laughs> Now that I know a thing or two about world building, if I d DM again, I'll probably just start over. <laughs> okay, here it's Tato. Here are your sniffers. My nose is that good. I don't know if my nose is that good. You, you, you've got more than me, Zucros. You've got more than me.
please redeem them now. At your earliest convenience. Kit. <laughs> okay. Let me drink some water. For a chat, of course. stream thumbnail on Twitch is just me really small. I can do that, Sucrose. <coughs> I think <laughs> you might be the like the third person to redeem a girl. <laughs> Sucrose, I hope that wasn't bad. <laughs> Sorry if that was weird. But you're welcome. Oh, there's Nightingale. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hi, Nightingale. Alright, okay. Yeah. 
good girl and tail. I tell you all right, very good girl. Yes you are. Yes you are. Yes you are. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl, I tell. I'm proud of you. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Yes you are. Yes you are. Yes you are. Dingo nine tail. That was good. <laughs> okay. Um I'm gonna stop that right now. Give me one second to sort my hands. I gotta get to bed. <laughs> At a reasonable hour I, I gotta get up early tomorrow. <laughs> So I'll, I'll be right back. Okay. I think we're, we're gonna go raid um, Sophia because we have not seen her in a while. Um, she's reading tonight. I don't know what she's reading. Oh, when Patty went to college. Okay. <laughs> but she's very cozy, cozy streamer. I love you all very much. Um, what are we playing tomorrow? <laughs> what are we playing tomorrow? I don't remember. I don't remember what we're playing tomorrow. Thanks for coming. Hi, hi, Barry. I'm sorry. We're reading out. Oh, we're playing Walking Dead tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> I'm playing Walking Dead tomorrow. Here you go. Okay. I can give you hooks like that. <laughs> Oops, test run went all the way. Uh, we're waiting out. I gotta get to bed. <laughs> You're welcome, Barry. Um, yes, we're playing Walking Dead tomorrow. Good night, Barry. Good night, Sucrose. Good night, Ninetail. Good night, Teto. Thorn. <coughs> Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. It was good to see you all. I love you guys. Wash your teeth. Drink water. Take care of yourselves. Good night. Thank you again for the, the gift, Teto. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, be nice. Love you guys. Bye.